Lee, I cannot tell you how pleased I am to have you as my first guest, because you're such a forthright conservative. You don't mince your words. So don't mince your words now. What do you think of this afternoon's deal? I, might say, I think he's nailed it, Jacob, to be honest with you. I mean, I wasn't expecting the, the deal he's got, uh, the alleged deal. Like we say, the devil is in the detail. I know the DUP has got to scroll, scroll through it. He's been very respectful. The tone and the de delivery was spot on today. Um, like I say, the DUP have got a few days to sleep on this now and, and come back to us. But I think you know, this is more than any other Prime Minister's got before. So fair play to Rishi. Uh, what he said today in the Commons, and you was there, I was there, I was very impressed. I think the, the people of this country are quite impressed with him. Um, and fair play to Rishi. It looks like we're going to get this sorted once and for all. And the Tory benches seemed pretty supportive when he stood up to spoke. I, I think they did. And I think, you know, after his initial statement on the TV today, you could tell by the press at the, at the conference after, they, they're normally circling like vultures, Jacob, but there was nothing they, they couldn't peck at him because, like I say, pretty much nailed it. And they were you know, really clutching at straws. So the party's happy. There's a bit of a buzz in that place over there, and I think, you know, we've finally put this to bed. I hope so, anyway. And that could be good for us nationally and could help a united party in a better position electorally. I, I think so, because, you know, I mean, this subject never comes up on the doorstep in Ashfield. It probably doesn't in, in, in Somerset, but it's so important for the union of our great country because, you know, why, you know, we, we look at England, Scotland and Wales, we've got our brothers and sisters in Northern Ireland, they're just as important. They, you know, we need to wrap our arms around them, give them a bit of love. They've been left out a little bit since we, we completed Brexit, I think this finally does it for them. I hope so. And you're now a staunch Conservative, outspoken Conservative, <laughs> but you used to be a member of the Labour Party. I did, yeah. Um, we all make mistakes, but as a former <laughs> Labour member, did you ever come across Betty Boothroyd, who so sadly oh. died today? And I just wondered if you might like to reflect on her from both your perspectives. As Honestly, a Jacob, I mean, Betty was, was one of those people in the 90s when she was, when she was a speaker. She... Uh, I think everybody in the country had the greatest respect for her. She spoke with that accent. She was a bit bossy. She didn't mince her words. You know, uh, people a little bit frightened of her in that place over there. And she's the sort of person with the way she conducted herself and the way she spoke that made me feel like I could have a, you know, a job in there one day. Uh, she's just connected to, to everybody in the country, regardless of politics. I think she was a great lady. So she was an inspiration to I you so. and encouraged you in your political career? Well, you look, you look at the way she spoke and you think, you know what, look at Betty with the way she speaks. She's just like a normal woman uh, with a northern accent. You know, she sort of, uh, I think she opened the floodgates a little bit to, to normal people to get a job in that place. So do you call yourself a normal pe person and me an abnormal <laughs> person? Is that what I'm well, supposed we're to take from that? We both from, come from different estates. I'm off of the council estate and you're probably off the posh estate. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, your experience as a Tory, yeah. did you find it difficult when you changed? Did you find that there was hostility from your um, old Labour um, friends and acquaintances, or did they accept that you'd realised that Labour wasn't working? The decision to do what I did, Jake, was very, very easy. The actual, you know, the physical part of doing it was, was quite difficult. It was uh, difficult for, for some of my friends, my family, my colleagues in Ashfield, but, you know, just 18 months later from making that decision, a lot of those actually voted for me. So I feel incredibly comfortable in the, in the skin I'm wearing at the moment. I feel welcome, you know, people like yourself made me feel incredibly welcome when I got to that place over there. And yeah, it's, I'm so happy. I, I really am happy. And the Conservative Party now is truly the, uh, the party of the working class in this country. Well, it was very interesting. In the last election, it was the first time that um, people on a higher average income voted Labour than voted yeah. Conservative, yeah. and that had never happened before. And you're going around the country addressing Conservative associations. What's the mood in the party at large? Well, the mood, I mean, the membership, I mean, I love the membership of the Conservative Party because they are the real grassroots there. Sometimes I think they're a little bit unloved, Jacob. These are the people that deliver the leaflets. These are the people that take abuse on the doorstep. These are the people that raise the money. Um, and, and, you know, my idea on a Friday night is to go around to these places. I was in your neck of the woods just a few weeks ago. It's to wrap my arms around them and say thank you, give them a bit of love, because these, these are the lifeblood of the party and we should never forget that. So you've drawn a lot of raffles recently. I have, yeah. And some very poor raffle prizes, <laughs> let me tell you. They often get given back to the next raffle. I don't blame them. And, you're, <laughs> and you, you've got a reputation for being quite out, outspoken. Yeah. How is Downing Street coping with that? Aren't the press office there coming on to you and saying shush, or are they yeah. allowing you a bit of free reign? You know what, when I first got offered the job, the first thing they said to me was keep saying what you're saying mm -hmm. and keep doing what you're doing. So I will hold them to that. And you had some controversy with saying that you were in favour of the death penalty. What response have you got from that? What have voters said to you about that? Rather than the Metropolitan 
um, set. Yeah. But what are voters when you go? I don't like listen to them metropolitanly. That's just a lot of nonsense. But the actual voters, you know what, Jacob? We're politicians, but we're human beings as well. We're all, we're all entitled to our opinions. This is not a new view of mine. I've held this opinion most of my life. And I'm allowed to have that opinion. I mean, my colleagues may disagree with me. It's never going to get through Parliament. Parliament will never vote for it. But as a human being, you know, we're not a communist state. You know, I've probably got some different views to you. And that's great. We're a broad church. Yeah, I don't, as it happens, agree with you on this. But one of the I think, things that I think is important is that senior politicians represent the views that large numbers of the country have, <laughs> even if they're not the majority and they're not going to change the law. I think that's part of a democracy yeah. and that you are part of representing... Uh, that by, by being willing to say it, you give our fellow citizens the courage to stand up for what they believe in. Yeah. And one of the other things we're going to be discussing this evening is freedom of speech, and you're part of that freedom of speech. I think so. I mean, a lot of people, Jacob, would say to me, you say outrageous things. I actually think that that place over there says some outrageous things, and sometimes they're not in touch with the rest, rest of the country. And, you know, when I go home on a Thursday... I get off the train in Kirkby and Ashfield, I walk up home, 20 minute walk, people will come out of the shops, the pubs, and they will come to me and say, Lee, you're saying what we're thinking, carry on. Now, once they stop doing that, then I know I've got a problem. And you and I both got elected last year, you know, in 2019, yeah. on the back of Boris Johnson being yes. leader of the party and yes. getting Brexit yes. done. Now he's no longer the leader. Do you think what's happened today has cemented Rishi Sunak's leadership, or do you think your members will still be saying to you that Boris was their man? Well, you're right, Jacob. In 2019, there was three things. There was Brexit, there was Boris, there was Corbyn. I think Rishi today has actually, like I said before earlier, has achieved something that no other prime minister achieved before, and that's the last three prime ministers. I think that's pretty incredible. So he's going to get a lot of brownie points today. I'm chuffed to bits, as I say, in my neck of the woods. Uh, and fair play to him. He's, he's got balls of steel, Rishi, has at the moment. Now, one final thing. Yeah. I hear you're having a boxing match. Is this for <laughs> a multi-million pound purse? Uh, who's it with? Tell me about well, it. Well, you, you know there is, a, uh, there is the, um, a chap that hangs around Whitehall, like the Japanese soldier. It really is with Steve Bray. It's Steve Bray. Um, I'm supporting a charity that deals with male suicide. It's a very important charity. Uh, there's been a little bit of needle between me and Steve since I got elected, so I thought, you know, let's raise some money for charity. Uh, and the challenge is to Steve, if he's watching, is uh, if I win, he stops protesting outside Parliament, and if he wins, I'll go and protest with him and try and join the European Union again. Well, I'm 